Hey, this is a spoiler alert! If you'd not like to hear any spoilers, please exit the video now! This is not a drill! You have been warned! Hello there, Ivy Pony! I just got back from watching My Little Pony the Movie, and I want to do a review about it. Oh, and for any of you that did not get the message, there will be spoilers on this video. So, I will give you approximately 10 seconds to leave this video if you do not want to hear spoilers. But, if you would like to hear any information about the movie, continue watching the video. 10 seconds starting now. Time's up! Okie dokie! For any of you that have stayed and continued to watch this video on their own free whim, that's great to hear. Now, let's get on to the topic at hand. Okay, the first thing is whenever you enter into the movie, or you're just now leaving the movie when it's over, the people are going to pass out certificates to you that says, My First Movie Certificate. I think these are more for the kids, but they're pretty interesting to get too. They kind of look like little Build-A-Bear workshop certificates. You know, the ones where you go to the Build-A-Bear and you make your bear and you name it and then put the birthdays on it and stuff. And then you get to take bear and certificate home and use it online. But this certificate doesn't do the stuff like online. I think it's just for show. But they're quite interesting. It's got the My Little Pony movie poster on the front, and it looks pretty awesome. And it's also got this coloring sheet on the back. I can't really show it because I don't have a picture of it. I could take a picture on it with my camera, but it won't probably show up really good. Kind of look uh, either blurry or too faded. But anyway, it will also say that on the front... Mm, my pony name is, so you'll have to write down your own pony name and born in a quest you're on, which is probably your birthday, and today's date, and the movie theater name that you go to. Well, they're quite interesting so far, and they're pretty cool, and I'm glad that they already gave these out more than just for people to go to a 3D movie and they just give you glasses, but you have to give them back. At least you get to take these home. I know I'm going to treasure this one, and possibly keep it in a frame, I don't know. But that's pretty much it for this certificate. Alright, now I want to get into more about the movie. First, I actually want to talk about the animation process about the movie. It's really interesting seeing that the ponies aren't in their usual flash animation puppets that we're normally seeing throughout the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic show. It's kind of interesting to see that they were working around with different ways of animation rather than their normal stuff. Because it's better than having to see one of the, another movie that looks like it's from Equestria Girls. Like before, we've had lots of different animations done, and it's mostly with the Flash puppets. And if we saw that again in this movie, it'd be like seeing another Equestria Girls movie and it wouldn't be enjoyable for anybody to actually see. It'd kind of be boring, but they surprised us and not actually put that in. They made a whole entire new, more detailed animation than they normally do. And it looks more like it's been done with hard work, sweat, blood, and tears to make that animation perfect. And I actually pretty much enjoyed it. My favorite part of the animation had to be, okay, this is a scene spoiler, so I just wanna warn you just in case you don't want any scene spoilers about it. But on the captain's ship for in one of the scenes, Rainbow Dash is doing a sonic rain boom, and when she does it, it looks so beautiful. I mean, top of the line animation I've ever seen it done. It looks magical, it looks more colorful and bright and sparkly. It thinks that 
makes the other Sonic Green move inside the show look really low quality. But I still love it in either way, but the movie had to be way better. Now there are some downfalls to the animation. I thought that throughout the whole thing, it was... I did think it was pretty good animation quality, but I kind of thought it would be a little bit more different. I don't know. Just... I'm not sure how to say it. I just feel as though I needed something. Something in there just a tiny bit. But other than that, everything in there was amazing. Seeing the ponies in different ways and seeing them turn into mer ponies was absolutely amazing. We've all been drawing like different ways of how they would look if they were mer ponies before. But they have opened up their eyes into new possibilities of how they would look. And it looks awesome. And showing about the um, cat character, um, Capper, seeing that it's not a pony, it's not a griffin, it's not an alicorn, it's not any of those creatures. It's actually more, more of a just a talking cat. And he looks really, really cool. He kind of reminds me of Puss in Boots. A little, but a little more sly and a little more handsome than you would ever expect from this show. And I think it's pretty awesome. Now I'm going to go into details about the music. The music? Spot on! Now, I love the music. It was so fun to hear more new songs all throughout the movie. It was very good instrumental. The lyrics were just really great. I loved how it was. I almost wanted to try and sing to it, even though I never heard any of the songs. I know there's been lots of spoiler songs all over YouTube lately, but I wanted to wait and watch the movie to hear it for myself and not spoil it, so that way I can enjoy it without hearing the song over again. And... I have to say, all the songs were pretty great, and I think I want to go and listen to it again so I can learn them, but they, there is no downside to any of them, but I am going to say that throughout the movie, they kept playing a new song almost every 5 to 10 minutes or so, and it kind of almost made me think of the movie Into the Woods, because... I have never heard in My Little Pony use songs so much in the same episode. It was kind of lousy. We only hear like either one or two songs in one episode. And it was kind of getting a little much. But I did enjoy every single last one of them. They, I don't know. My favorite song had to be I See the Light. It was really, really cool. It just made me feel happy and warm and bright inside. I just think, yeah, that's pretty much it I got for songs. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Alright, now about the characters. The brand new four characters that are in here. Well, that we sneen. None of the ponies have ever been outside of Equestria before. Never have they ever traveled anywhere outside of Equestria, but be around in new areas of Equestria that we haven't seen before. But it is kind of interesting seeing lots of new things happening, new characters, besides seeing changelings and seeing griffins or any one other kind of creatures like that. We see these weird creatures that look like monsters, and they're kind of living out in the outlands in the desert. And it's kind of strange seeing that we don't ever see them in Equestria before. Like if one of them tried <laughs> um, walking into Equestria to see about finding new lands to come to. But um, I think think that it's really interesting about these four new characters. I'm going to start with Capper the cat. He is pretty cool. 
I find him really sly and the way he looks, his design is just really awesome. And I love how his voice is, the voice actor. I'm not sure by names, but I just know the characters' names and not the voice actors' names for now. But Capper has to be one of my favorite characters throughout the movie. He's He kind of reminds me of Puss in Boots in a bit of a way. Because he has that sort of sneaky thing, and I think he's kind of Mexican or something. But, wow, he is really cool, and I think he's really attractive a bit. <laughs> Sorry if I sound weird, but it's true. He's pretty awesome, and how he gets them out of a jam all the time was really nice of him. But he's still kind of a con artist type of character, and likes to think that he's a friend to you, but he's actually just tricking you, like cats do, because they're sly. And, okay, now I want to move on to Princess Skystar. She is the sea pony that was a hippogriff of uh, the hippogriff entire city. She's their princess, and now she's a Mer pony living underneath the hippogriff's kingdom. And she kind of reminds me of a different version of Pinkie Pie in a way. It just shows from, like, yeah, you've seen them do their, uh, their friendship bonding in the movie and see that they become really close friends even after just a short amount of time. And I think that's pretty interesting to see that... There are lots of other characters that can almost be exactly like Pinkie Pie, besides Cheese Sandwich, which is like a male version of Pinkie Pie in a way. But anyway, she is a very interesting character. That She is fun and vibrant and so great of a friend to make. But I think she's got a little a bit of a screw loose from living down in the water for so long because... She has these little shells that she carries around thinking that those are her friends. And it's kind of awkward, but I can understand because they've been down there for so long that they've never actually got to be around any other people. Well, ponies per se. Okay, now the next character I want to talk about is Queen Nova. She is the... Queen of the Hippogriffs, but now Queen of the Sea Ponies. And she is kind of reminds me... Okay, she is like a mixture of Celestia and Queen Latifah together. And that's really cool. I find that very fun, but Queen Latifah is not the one who voice a voice was the voice actress of Queen Nova. And that's kind of too bad. But she is also very much like Celestia in a way. Cares for her people. Wanting to make sure they are safe from danger. And doing everything she can in her power just so that everyone is happy and safe away from the Storm King. I have not seen any mu much different charactering from, from her because consisting... Considering that she was um, only in there for, for a little short amount of time. But I know that she is a very, must be a very brave character. And I hope that we get to see more of these characters in future episodes. If they ever do make them come appear in the, in the show itself. But I don't think they will. I think this is just from the movie. But I do hope that my prediction comes true. Okay. Now, the last character I want to talk about is... Oh, wait. No, she's not the last one. Um, okay, scratch that. She's the second to last. Her, The character I want to talk about now is Tempest. She is the bad pony that has... A broken horn and apparently wants to try 
and help King Storm take over Equestria, like he has with all the other worlds, like the Hippogriff's world and a lot of other places that we're unaware of. He, she is very interesting to see. She's dark, mysterious, more, more like dem very scary than what you would normally see for a villain. You would normally see like I think the most terrifying character you, that in my opinion, that you would see, that would look that dark and scary and menacing, would either be Queen Chrysalis or Nightmare Moon. But she is very interesting. Her background is very curious and wondering how her horn is broke. But in the movie, it shows a story about it. But I don't want to give out too much detail about the movie. And for her to, to show up, it was kind of interesting. And I just wanted to see even more about her and actually Tempest isn't really her real name I forget what it's called because they said it close to the end of the movie but you'll get to hear what it is and trust me you will have a laugh about what it is I won't tell you because because eh, one I don't know what it is and two I can't reveal a lot because it will spoil way too much for you about this film. Okay, now the last character I want to talk about is Captain Silano. She is the pirate captain of the ship that they that the main six is on to go to the hippogriffs. She was actually a really fun character to see, even though we didn't get to see much of her. I really thought it was cool seeing a pirate character on, on board on this, no pun intended, but her design and everything, I'm not sure what she's supposed to be, I think she's supposed to be a griffin or something, I'm not completely sure, but I liked it that there was charactering about pirates and other types of other creatures that involve birds and things like that in the show. It was really interesting to see. I found it really fun and entertaining to see pirates on here, even though there wasn't very much action from their scenes. But I kind of liked it. It was pretty cool. Especially for Rainbow Dash. She thought it was awesome that they were pirates. And that they got to land on their ship. But I think that's about it for how I want to talk about these five new characters that I've said. Yeah, I believe it's five or four. I don't know. I'm sorry if I'm getting the numbers wrong and I'm mumbling a lot. I'm just re reading off the top of my head and saying what I want to say off script. So... My apologies for mumbling so much and trying to figure out what to say. Because I'm just saying off the top of my head. Because I just literally just got finished watching the movie. And I'm at home recording this. And trying to get as much detail as I can out of it. But that's about it I have for the characters or what I think. And I'll move on to the next thing about the movie. Alright, the sad thing I have seen in the movie is that, okay, I know they've been making this movie for about the amount of three years, so they have, we have not seen um, Princess Cadence's baby Flory Heart, and we did not see Starlight Glimmer, because they, this is, might have been before t that Cadence had her baby and Starlight ever came into the picture. This is probably around that time, so we don't really get, get to see them, but it's okay. But out through the timing of the movie, not seeing any 
characters that we know now and the new seasons and everything. It's kind of disappointing, but actually okay at the same time. Mm, that's about it I have for a little downside about background characters coming into the movie, but actually we do get to see Starlight Glimmer and then one scene glimpse that she's in there. So I guess the animators got a chance to squeeze her into the show at the best chance that they could get. So that way it would look like the entire movie is up to date to the seasons that we are on right now. Well, that's as much as I got from background ponies about this whole entire movie, if they're evolved or not. Now, I think I'll move on to the last topic. Now, the last topic about this is that, um, I wanted to give a conclusion about the movie. Um, from around, I've watched a couple of videos when I came back to see about anybody else's review about it. They saying that it was good, but not as great as they thought it was going to be. I, I say maybe in that way I kind of agree with them but I thought it was the really really great My Little Pony movie I have ever seen made since this show has appeared in 2010 but um I still recommend watching it but for new people that have not seen the show or are just getting into it, you shouldn't let them just watch it because they'll probably get the wrong idea. Like how people watch anime for the first time and they watch a, a show that is giving the wrong impression about what anime is about. So I think you should just let them watch the, t the, the show instead of the movie first because it will kind of already throw them off about what's going on and who these characters are and what they do and everything about that. But it's pretty interesting to watch and I believe you should go check it out. It's still in theaters. It came out on October 6th and I just watched it today on October 7th. It was really interesting and fun and magical and musical to me. And don't ever miss a chance to watch it while it's still in the theaters. Okay, I believe that's it all I wanted to say for this video. I will see everybody next time when I make another review video. Oh, and that just reminds me, this is my actual first review video I've ever made. Wow, way to go me. And I'm sorry that Pinkie Pie isn't in here. She's been having a long, long day of being in the movie and already shooting it for that long. So that explains why she's not here to greet you or give you as a Pinkie Pie would say thing. Because she is very exhausted. I know she's a party pony and she can go on and on and on for hours at fun. But sometimes every pony needs a break now and then. Well, I guess that wraps about up. So go ahead, watch the movie. I don't know if you would enjoy it or you would dislike it. But leave a comment down below about if you have seen the movie, then tell me what you think about it. Because I would really like to hear what you had to say. Okay. This is Sakura Moon signing off on this review. May the moonlight guide your way.